Welcome back to the Garden Hutch. Today we're going to discuss how we do our daily garden inspections. Let's get going. Well, we all know that bugs are crafty little critters. They can get in all of our food and they can destroy a crop relatively fast if you're not on top of it. So what we do here at the Garden Hutch is daily, we walk through all of our gardens and we go through and we inspect all of our plants. So we're gonna go through and kind of give you an idea of what we look for when we walk through the garden, uh, little tips and tricks on how to solve those problems. And then as always, we like to throw in a bit of areas of opportunity for us to be proactive to keep some of these problems to a risk. Now, predominantly, we're gonna focus on pest issues, whether they be bugs or you know molds, mildews, that sort of stuff and what to look out for. But before we got too far into that, there are just a couple other things that we do when we do our garden inspection. The most obvious being is looking for our fruits or vegetables from the plant, right? We've talked about this earlier in our other videos, but it's well documented that the more you pick your vegetables, the more vegetables you'll get. So, you know, say take a zucchini plant, for example, the zucchini, it, the plant itself it doesn't think it's making food for us. You know, a zucchini's uh, whole idea when it's growing as far as a plant and its goal is just to make a progeny, right? Just to make one large zucchini that has enough um, seeds in it so that it can pass those traits on and then et cetera, et cetera. We like to take those zucchinis and we like to eat them. So we try to get as many of them as we can. So when we're doing our inspections, if a zucchini has been on there for a day or two and it's a little smaller than you want, but it's not growing fast, pick it and eat it. The reason being is you're gonna get more zucchini. So that's the same for beans, peas, zucchinis. Your winter squashes are a little bit different because you know they, they, they take longer to ripen, that sort of thing. But by and large, the whole idea is the more you pick, the more you're gonna get. So that's number one thing to look for on your inspections. Number two are, you know, besides the obvious critter things, is try to look out for your pollinators. Make sure that you're having insects, beneficial insects come in to pollinate your fruits and vegetables. You're gonna get more from them. The fruits and vegetables are gonna taste better. And in some cases, things like um, your squashes, they just won't even form if they're not pollinated, right? They'll just shrivel up on the vine and, and, and go off. So making sure that we look for the beneficial insects in our garden. And if we're not seeing them, there are things we can do, of course. We can manually pollinate if that's necessary. We do that here on the homestead with our squashes just to make sure, even though we have bees and other uh, pollinators around, we just take the initiative to make sure because we love squash. You can do that for any of your fruits and vegetables, but that's incredibly time intensive. So anyway, keep an eye out, make sure the pollinators are there. If they're not, make a note of that and start doing a little bit of research on how you can get local pollinators into your garden. And then that'll help improve your overall yield and cut down on your manual labor. So before we actually start looking at the plants and what to look for, I just wanted to cover when we do our plant inspections. I like to do our first plant inspection every day as the sun is coming up. And the reason for that is at that point, the plants are at their strongest. So if I need to go through and I need to trim anything, it's a great time of day to do it. The plants under the least amount of stress as the sun is coming up, there's dew and a lot of moisture available for it. So first thing in the morning, that's when we do our first tour, or our, I'm sorry, our first inspection. The second inspection we do right at dusk, because we have to come out and put the chickens up right at dusk anyway. So we like to come out at that time, we'll get the chickens put away. Then we'll just take sort of a, a cursory tour through the property, go through all of the gardens to see if there's any noticeable trauma. So the noticeable trauma, right, that brings us to the next part of it. What exactly is it that we're looking for? So let's go ahead, we're gonna step into the top garden and we're gonna talk about leaves to start with. So these zucchinis are a great place to kind of go over what we do with our leaf inspection. And it's real simple. All you're looking for is any sort of trauma to your leaf. I have one here that I wanted to show you. You can see there, something has been chewing on right around the veins of our leaves. So 
we know if we see something like that, we know that it's got to be some sort of infestation of either an aphid or some sort of smaller bug. And we'll go over how to handle the leaf issues. But at this point, I just want to point out the importance of observing the leaves. So something like this, if you don't address, um, you know, if you don't catch it the first day, you could come out the next day and have lost several leaves or maybe even the entire plant. Another example that's not bite is you know, it's not the bugs biting, but you can see the discoloration of this zucchini. And anybody who watches the channel knows this plant has kind of had some issues right from the beginning. But what we can do with this is, this is a mildew, a powdery mildew, I believe, is what causes this. So we also have a treatment for it. But again, just like with the infestations, if it's not addressed, this can not only kill one plant, but it can very easily spread to the other plants in this bed, and then you're without zucchini. So that, that's just an example of how we do our leaf inspections and why they're important. So we've already discussed the leaves. Now let's go on and talk about the base of our plants. Now I'm using here, I'm using melons. And the reason I wanna go through this is because you can see this bed is just a sprawling mass of melons, right? We've got watermelon and cantaloupe in this bed. Now, melons and squashes, they are, as we discussed earlier, they are um, have problems with boar worms, which will get in to the bottom of them. But the reason I wanted to come in here was because I want to look at the base of our melons. And right there is the base. What we're looking for is we want to make sure that there are no bite holes in there and that there's not any sort of sap or water leaking from this bottom part of the base. Especially melons and your squashes, this is the entry point for the most common in our area issue. So you'll see we proactively put the DE on that and we'll go over that here again in a minute. But when you're doing your inspections, always for every one of your plants, regardless of what they are, you're gonna to want to check the base of it and make sure that there's no trauma or any insects, specifically any sort of fluid that might be leaking out of that, which could lead to like a boar worm or something like that being inside of your plant. The final thing that we like to inspect are the actual fruits and vegetables themselves. So these are the new ground cherries and you can see these things actually suffer from flea beetles a lot like our eggplants do um, so you know this would have been a good spot also for the leaf inspection but for the purposes now we like to look and make sure that the fruit that there's nothing that's accosting them while they're on the actual plant itself so you can see here that the outer shell of these, there's no bites, there's no holes, there's nothing that would retard the growth of the actual fruit itself. This is kind of a good time to look into this sort of thing is, you know, before they actually start forming, the reason that you want to do that, or before they ripen, I'm sorry, is because almost always, if you're going to have an infestation, it's going to start beforehand, before they actually start ripening. And if you can get it early, then you can still get a harvest. But again, if, if you're not proactive in this area, before you know it, you could be out and have zero harvest for all the effort that you've put into these. And another common occurrence are the tomatoes, where it may not even be a pest issue, but we can go over here and look at these. These are the beef masters, and they're in their infancy state. But what we're looking for is just to make sure nothing has taken a bite of them. You'll notice as you do as you garden longer that squash bugs, and we always call them squash bugs and think about them on squash, but they'll jump all over your daggum garden and they'll just randomly bite some fruits and that fruit will end up rotting. Um, the squash bug, it, it emits, um, it's like a, a, I don't know if it's a toxin, but their saliva breaks down the fruits and vegetables to make it easier for them to eat, which makes them rot and it makes it where we can't eat them. So again, the third thing that we always like to look for on our inspections, we do the leaves and then we do the base. And after that, we start looking for the fruit to make sure nothing has attacked them yet. So we've done our inspection and we found that we've got little chew holes in our leaves or perhaps there's something attacking the fruit 
or maybe like as we looked at uh, the watermelon, maybe we saw a, like a, a boar worm or something had gotten in there. The way that we treat our plants is we use as organic as we can, right? So we use mostly neem oil. If there's something on the leaves, for example, something's biting them, we'll take neem oil with dishwashing liquid, we'll put it in a backpack sprayer. If it's under the leaves, I'll use like a little hand sprayer. You'll spray it on there. And what ends up happening is the neem oil is a, is a natural anti-insecticide. So it will, anything that you spray it on, it'll kill those bugs. It'll also coat the leaves and make it to where any bugs that bite them will also ingest the toxin. But we have bees, right? Well, the thing of it is your bees aren't chewing on your plants. So the reason I bring that up is whenever you go to spray, don't spray your flowers, right? You wanna just treat the area that's being bitten or that's being attacked. Do not spray your flowers because that's where your bees or your natural pollinators are going to go and so you want to give them a safe haven in your yard so obviously we don't want to accidentally kill them if we have an infestation on the ground right something like um, a lot of times your squash bugs will live on the ground crawl up under your leaves and eat them that sort of stuff or the boar worms or the worms that live on the ground and get into the base of your plants for that we use the diatomaceous earth uh, we call it de We've talked about it a lot on this channel. You can get it really cheap. Um, some people call it fossil flower, that sort of thing, but it's organic. You can put it on your garden and it will kill, again, it'll kill any insect that it comes in contact with. That's why it's important, don't put them on your flowers, right? Only dust things that you're positive that your pollinators are not gonna get around, but the bugs that are chewing your leaves are. The reason we don't use um, the powder on our leaves is, you know, I, I guess it's like twofold, really. The wind here is terrible a lot of times and it can just blow the, the dust right off of it. Um, and also it's really easy if you're dusting the leaves for it to fall down on the flowers and have a negative impact on your pollinators. So again, it's super important when you're doing this to make sure that you understand what you're using, what you want to affect and treat, and then avoid the flowers so you don't have a negative impact on your pollinators. The last thing I would like to discuss in this video are ways that we can be proactive uh, with our plants to avoid any of these issues. Uh, obviously the easiest thing that you can do is make sure your plants are healthy. And the way that we do that is we make sure that we fertilize regularly and we make sure that we give the plants the fertilizers that they need to be healthy. So just kind of do your research. We have several videos on how you can identify those, how to get different um, nutrients and that sort of thing to your plant. So you can check those out if you'd like. You also want to make sure that your plants have a regimented water schedule. So on the homestead, the way we do it is we like to give our plants a certain amount of inches of water in a week. So we water every two days and we'll water as much as we need to for that week. If we get a little bit too much, we're not as worried about that because most of our beds are in uh, raised bed or most of our plants, I'm sorry, are in raised beds. They're built to be able to handle the water. If they get too much, it'll just simply flow through the bottom. Um, you know, it'll soak up what it can. The problem you'll run into is if you have too little water. And if you have too little water, what'll end up happening is your plant will not have what it needs to defend itself against an infestation or mildew, any of that sort of thing. So making sure that we fertilize regularly and accurately and making sure that we water sufficiently are important. The last thing as far as being proactive on your plants is we need to make sure that we trim and prune correctly. So again, we, I touched on it earlier about when we come out to do our morning inspection, I always bring my hand shears. So if a, a limb or a leaf or something has been attacked and it needs to be taken off, we can do it right then. It's easily the, uh, easily the best time for your plant. Right before the sun comes up, it's at its, um, it's at its healthiest point of the day, generally speaking, right there as the sun is coming up. So you can do any of that sort of stuff, but make sure you prune correctly. We like to prune our squash plants. We do our tomato plants as we've shown. We also do all of our greens and lettuces and that sort of stuff, just to keep you know any of the leaves off the ground. And just real quick, the reason you do that, once any of your plant starts to decay, it's going to attract that smell, right? Bugs and pests, they are attuned to decaying matter because that's what they eat. You know, they can smell it way far away. As soon as that happens, things are gonna be attracted to that plant. 
If you remove those specific diseased or decaying items from your plant, take it to your compost pile or somewhere else, it's going to attract those bugs and things to the area you take them as opposed to the plant that you're trying to um, curate and, and get the food from over the course of the year. As always, I would like to say thank you to all you folks that have made it here to the end. If you haven't, please consider subscribing to the channel. It really does help us out quite a bit. You can hit the little bell icon. YouTube will notify you when we upload new content. If you enjoyed this video, consider giving it a like. Until next time, I hope you folks take care of yourselves. Peace.